My name is Thomas King. I'm from the Karimsi University of Applied Sciences and together with my co-chairs, Christian Kolmitzer from the University of Applied Sciences Vienna, Andreas Bester from the British University in Egypt and the entire organization team, we are hosting EDUCON this year and we are very proud of it. It would have been really great to meet you all in Vienna, but unfortunately the circumstances that we all know don't allow it. On the other hand, I'm quite sure it makes it possible for participants from all parts of the world to present or listen to presentations of EDUCON. We actually have about 300 registrations from 53 countries, so uh, good early morning Americas, at least at the East Coast, in the West Coast, it's uh, still deepest night. And good evening, New Zealand, for example. Engineering education is our, as well as the conference's topic, and especially engineering education focuses a great challenge in the current COVID-19 pandemic. Due to necessary practical and laboratory education and training. We can see this also in the great number of papers and presentations. Uh, two days ago, I tried and counted 36 presentations, more or less which have the words COVID-19 just in the title. I did not count those with pandemic, corona, and so on, but just in the title, not in the full text. Our main topic this year is women in engineering. And of course, not only because it's abbreviated Wien, which is the German name of Vienna, but we can find uh, this topic covered and reflected in our keynotes, in workshops, roundtables, in a great number of presentations. And if you have a look at the names of our virtual rooms, also there, they are named after famous women uh, who played a significant role in physics, IT, or engineering. Yesterday, Sylvia, uh, who is co-chairing this session with me, told me, yes, but we can't see it in the speakers of this opening ceremony and that's true, definitely. So, uh, okay, maybe we should be be uh, do better next time in this case. This leads me to explaining some uh, organizational facts about the next three days. Besides our six keynotes, the next, well, the first one will start immediately after this opening session. We had over 350 submissions for EDUCON, which resulted in over 260 accepted papers. We have nine special sessions and as already mentioned, around 300 participants. The presentations are divided into usually five or six parallel sessions. You just have to click either on the link of the virtual room to see all the sessions or on the link of the session itself. But please be aware that you have to be logged in into ConfTool to see all the links. For detailed information, please check also your inbox. We send emails with uh, instructions for participants, for presenters. And if you are a session chair, you received an information about this as well. If you have any further question, please contact the organization team. You may also use the conference online support and these are the white program slots before the morning and afternoon sessions. And now I wish, first of all, you, the authors, the presenters, the participants, the scientific community, and also us, the organization team, the successful EDUCON 21. May I now introduce Silvia Lingo, who is co-chairing this session with me, and she is head of the Teaching and Learning Center of the University of Applied Sciences Vienna. Silvia, please. Hello, Thomas. Thank you very much for this warm welcome. It's an honor to, and pleasure to be here in our wonderful city of Vienna. You can see in my background our imperial history of the Schönbrunn Palace, where Empress Sissi and her Emperor Franz lived. It would be a pleasure to meet you here in Vienna next time, I hope. And now I would like to introduce you to our speakers of the opening words. As Region 8 Director from IEEE, the world's largest technical professional organization for the advancement of technology, we are very happy to welcome him from sunny Spain, Antonio Luque. <laughs> he currently holds the position of Association Professor in the Department of Electronic Engineering of the University of Seville. Antonio, 
it's very nice to meet, meet you and um, may I ask you for your brief greetings. Good morning, good afternoon everyone. Thank you Sylvia Thomas uh, for inviting me to be here. That's my, my pleasure. Uh, so as uh, Sylvia mentioned, I'm serving as a Reunite director this year. And Reunite is the geographical area which typically hosts uh, an EduCon in, uh, let's say, in normal years. Uh, this year, I'm grateful for the opportunity of being here and talk a little bit about the region, even uh, when the conference is being held online. So allow me to describe a little bit what are the things that we do in a Tripoli, what are the things that we do in Reunite, and uh, how you can participate in these uh, things. So, uh, yeah, wait a minute. Make sure it moves forward somehow, yeah. So uh, uh, the world according to IEEE is divided into 10 geographical regions. And we, uh, in this part of the world, we belong to what we call region eight, which encompasses Africa, Middle East and Europe. This is the, the, the area where IDUCON is uh, held. So we have uh, around 70,000 members in more than 100 countries in this region organized in different units. And we are proud to say that we uh, also have 20,000 students which are the future of the organization, who uh, bring vitality and uh, initiatives to the, uh, to the region and to the organization. All these big number of members are organized in different units. For example, we have chapters uh, where members with the same technical interests, for example, education, for example, uh, laser, for example, electron devices uh, are together and organize activities together. But we also have student branches where uh, students uh, studying in a particular college or university, get together and do things uh, and do projects together. We have student branch chapters, which are like a mix of the of the uh, before, and we have affinity groups, uh, which uh, unite people with uh, interests which are not purely technical but other. So as you see, it's a complex organization, but we have opportunities for everybody to participate. We have opportunities for everybody to get involved and uh, attend and also organize uh, activities. Let me. Uh, show you what our uh, priorities for this year, what are the things that we try uh, to achieve. So our uh, main goals will be to provide a member experience that is valuable during all their professional life. That means that we are trying to uh, uh, accompany the members uh, when they are students, when they are young professionals, when they are starting their professional careers, and also when they are mature enough and also near their the retirement, so during all professional life. Very important for us is uh, having a, a diverse a pool of members, of volunteers, and make sure that everyone is welcome regardless of any uh, origin or other types of, of differences. So we have a very diverse and inclusive organization, and this is really important uh, for us. It will be very good to bring new volunteers and engage them because this is a volunteer driving organization and the uh, volunteers are our, uh, our blood and the, the people that organize things. And definitely there are communities where uh, we don't have a, a big presence and we would like to improve. So there is an IEEE strategic plan and we try to uh, align with them from 2020 to 2025. And I will talk in one minute, I will talk how you can, uh, about how you can participate here. Now, all these uh, priorities are realized in different activities that are happening everywhere in the region. So we have publications, we have educational courses, uh, we have activities for students, for education, young professional about history, many things. But I would like to briefly talk about the conferences that will be held in the region in the coming months. So we have conferences for the African geographical area, for the European geographical area, where everybody is welcome to participate, of course, but they are held in, this, in these areas. We have the Mediterranean Electrotechnical Conference here, and we have the International Humanitarian Technology Conference that will be held December uh, in December this year online, organized by the United Kingdom and Ireland uh, section. And uh, this will be a very nice opportunity for everybody involved in humanitarian technologies to participate. We also have uh, events for students, for young professionals, and many other things that uh, well, we don't have time now to, to discuss, but you can but you can check and you are, you are very welcome to contribute. Uh, how can you do that? So IEEE is a volunteer driven organization. Uh, it's very nice to be a member and everybody's welcome to be so, but it's even nicer to become a volunteer and participate and get involved and contribute your time, contribute your effort. So sometimes this means that, or some people think that this means that you need to spend a lot of time, like a big number of hours per week, or you have to travel a lot and this type of things, and probably you don't have time for that. But this is not no longer true. 
these days we can we can volunteer without traveling. This is one of the few good things that this situation is bringing to us. Uh, but we can also have small tasks. We can do small things and try to get involved. And I will definitely recommend everybody to, to do this because it's something that you are doing for others. You are serving others and this is very rewarding. But at the same time, you are getting a lot of reward by yourself. You are growing your network. You are uh, acquiring some new skills. You are leading organizations and so on. So uh, I would really like to encourage everyone to participate, to uh, uh, get the direction, get the leadership of the organization, because this is something which is driven by members. So if you want to know more, please don't hesitate to contact me or any other of the IEEE volunteers that uh, will be speaking in, in one minute or uh, during the, the whole conference. So I don't want to extend much uh, more, just uh, want to finish uh, uh, by welcoming you to virtually to reunite, which is the largest, it's the most diverse IEEE uh, region. I really hope that the next year we can enjoy Educon in person in Tunisia in 2022. I think it's March 2022. And I really uh, look forward to seeing you all here. Welcome again and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Antonio, uh, for your words. Uh, we will remain in Spain because all of you know that the EDUCON is the flagship conference uh, of the IEEE Education Society. And therefore I would like to ask Edmondo Tova for his words. He is from the Polytechnic University of Madrid. Edmondo, are you there? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Thomas. Uh, yeah. here and it's a pleasure to be here from Madrid uh, to participate in this opening ceremony. Okay, dear uh, Rector of the University of Applied Sciences, uh, dear Vice Rector of Technicum Vienna, um, IEEE Region 8 Director and Conference Chair, and finally to all the participants, it's, it's, it's uh, not yet the moment, but we are close to being able to meet personally in a new EDUCON. A year ago, I was fortunate to be able to participate in this EDUCON opening ceremony. At that time, my remembrance was to all the victims and relatives of the COVID-19 virus, especially those from the world of education and for all the members of the EDUCON community affected by this outbreak. One year later, I also acknowledge the entire EDUCON committee and the IEEE Education Society that has faced challenges to adapt to this situation and find a stimuli to overcome them in the difficulties. The IEEE Education Society, founded in 1957, is now a worldwide society of thousands of professionals dedicated to ensuring high quality education in science and engineering. Our members, even stronger in the pandemic, engage students each day, research, and propose new theories in learning science develop new learning technology and innovate classroom practice. Membership in our society includes electronic format copies of our journals as IEEE Transactions on Education and IEEE Latin American Learning Technology Magazine and Technologies um, and Transactions on Learning Technologies. Plus, we provide uh, online learning opportunities as webinars, open educational resources, or MOOCs. You can also participate in face-to-face -face learning, networking, and presentation opportunities at members' rates at chapter events and conferences. EDUCON is a special conference for me since its first edition in 2010. Which took, play, that, uh, which took place in Madrid and which I had the opportunity to organize with Manuel Castro, it has not stopped growing and maturing. Thanks to the contribution of all participants, organizers, sponsors, it has become our regional flagship conference and has served as a model and reference for the rest of the Education Society conferences, such as TAIL in the Region 10, and EDUNAI, EDUNAI in Region 9. As well, for the new conference joined to our society, like uh, learning with MOOCs. EDUCON is one for the five premier international conferences. 
The coronavirus is currently having revolutionary and potentially long-term effects on how classroom instruction is delivered around the world and at all levels of education, instructors are being mandated to use online instruction to address their teaching assignments. Instructors are fa unfamiliar with the learning who must quickly get up uh, to speed teaching online, have little knowledge of the existence of these kind of resources. This year, the motto is women in, the, in engineering that has allowed it attracting exciting proposals of workshops and presentations and having distinguished keynotes. IEEE Education Society envisions as IEEE a vibrant community of women and men collectively using their diverse talents for the benefit of humanity and strives to advocate women in leadership roles in governance and career advancement for women in the profession. The, ID, the IEEE Education Society has worked closely with the local organizers monitoring developments related to the COVID-19 outbreak. And at this point, I want to show my maximum appreciation to all those who have made it possible for us to meet online, but at Vienna in spirit. Volunteers and committee sponsors, in particular, let me personalize my recognition to the general chairs, Thomas Klinger, Christian Kolnitzer, and Andreas Pester by their impressive work, and Enrique Santos as vice president of uh, conferences and workshops in United uh, Education Society. And Manuel Castro as, as chair of the steering committee of this conference. I extend my heartfelt uh, thanks and appreciation to all the participants. These are difficult or not easy times, but we all get through them by working together. I am sure we will enjoy in the future at Vienna in person. Thank you very much and welcome to the conference. Thank you very much, uh, Edmondo, for your kind words. Thanks again. Uh, now we are going back to Vienna, and uh, it's a great pleasure for me that we will now listen to uh, the greeting words of our two rectors, respective vice rectors. And we are starting with Christian Kolmitzer. He's uh, not only uh, my co chair here, but he is also vice rector of University of Applied Sciences Vienna. Christian, please. Hello, dear participants. On behalf of the University of Applied Sciences Technicum Vienna, I would like to welcome you warmly to this important IEEE conference, EDUCON 2021. In normal times, you would get the chance to see the famous buildings and gardens in springtime Vienna. Even the weather has improved during the last hours, so it, would be, it is sunny and nice outside. You would enjoy typical Austrian food and, and drink, and uh, you could visit cultural events. And most important, you would discuss things face to face and you would get to know new colleagues, what the basic reason is for a conference or so. This year, everything is different. Welcome to virtual Vienna. The University of Applied Sciences Technicum Vienna is the largest technical university of applied sciences in Austria with about 4,500 students in 31 degree programs in the fields of electronic, computer science, mechanical engineering, biomedical engineering. Designing curricula and courses, didactics and teaching, this is our daily business. We are actually in the process of redesigning our teaching in a way that we focus on practical things during the campus phase, like labs or things like that, and encourage students to self-study theoretical backgrounds online or at home. This helped us during the corona crisis. Many of the developments used during this phase will be also used in normal times. There is a shortage of qualified engineering worldwide, and this conference gives hints how to overcome this problem by improving the quality of the technical education, raising the interest of women to this topic, and enhance the interest in STEM generally. How to improve the quality? The corona pandemic 
gives a great boost to digitalize teaching and learning. Many of the solutions we used during these days will also be used afterwards. So many ways have been taken. We see so many new developments. Learners and teachers have updated the tooling. This conference is a showcase for these developments. Many papers explain and evaluate new possibilities like simulations, encouragement for self-teaching, hybrid learning models, and so on. Many contributions to this conference, also workshops, helped to raise the interest of women in technical topics. They show new ways to increase the number of female students in technical subjects by presenting role models, gender-specific teaching, or by involving girls in technical questions in primary school. To enhance the interest in STEM, both points mentioned before are helpful. Furthermore, technology must be incorporated in the basic education. The papers and workshops of this conference address all this. They show new solutions and views to these problems, and therefore this conference is of great interest for teaching and researching organizations, for students, and for companies as well. I wish you all a fruitful discussion and interesting presentations. All the best for the conference. Thank you. Christian, thank you very much for your warm and welcome, warm welcome and the interesting insights of the University of Applied Sciences Technikum Wien. Now I would like to hand over to Peter Granik, Rector of Carinthia University of Applied Sciences. Peter is Rector and Professor for Business and Innovation Management, Klagenfurt, Austria. Peter, we send nice greetings to you, your university, and the wonderful Corinthian lakes and mountains. And we would like to invite you last but not least for your welcome address. Peter, please. Yeah, good morning, Silvia. Thanks for your warm welcome. Good morning, everybody. Dear ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to all of you from my side. As a rector of the Corinthia University of Applied Sciences, I'm very happy that my institution can host this 12th conference together with the University of Applied Sciences Technicum Vienna. I'm very honored to welcome all the keynote speakers from, you can say, nearly all over the world, beginning from Argentina through Sweden to the south of Austria, where me and probably also Mrs. Herlitschka, the first keynote speaker for today, sit at the moment. I'm also pleased to see a lot of colleagues here. I would like to use this chance to tell something about my institution. We offer study programs in four departments, including engineering and IT, construction and architecture, management, social work, and health sciences. Engineering and IT has been a big part of the Corinthian University for Applied Sciences almost from the very beginning this meaning for the last 25 years. At this moment, we offer four bachelor and eight master degree programs in this area, including six of which are taught completely in English, and some more are to come from the fall semester. We have a significant international engineering community, both at Corinthian University of Appliances and also in the towns of Villach and Klagen. When it comes to the motto of the, this year's event, I can say that our university has been trying to support women in engineering initiatives since many years. In German, we call it Mehr Frauen in the Technik. We have had a series of small events with the local industry. Women's Day in 2018 with Infineon or in info sessions, Frauen in the Technik, with the local labor foundation in 2019, where we try to promote engineering study programs among women and are happy that some decided to follow the professional path in this area. COVID year has been challenging for all of us. And as educators, we have done what we could to continue teaching in the virtual world. And this alone is connected with a lot of challenges, especially engineering. But 
also in some health and maybe also art study programs. By the way, a big thank to each and every of you who sent papers for this conference. A lot of them describe the challenges of teaching engineering virtually. So you, or better to say, so we will all have the possibility to use the conference platform to exchange ideas on this matter, but also offer new solutions. Last but not least, a great thank to Thomas Klinger, Christian Kolnitzer, and their amazing organization teams for the great job they are doing. Finally, I wish all of us up a great conference, exciting performances, effective discussions, and a lot of inspiration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter, for your, for your kind words. Now it's my task to start to open EDUCON 21 officially. And uh, I would like to do this by just handing over to Manuel Castro. Manuel Castro is uh, already mentioned today, and uh, he is also chair for the next session. He and Monica Dibitini will be chairing the next keynote session. And Manuel, are you already there? Yes, thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, thank you very much to all the people. Uh, nice to see you today. Usually I would say the floor is yours, but now I say camera and microphone is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. And today uh, it's a real pleasure to be here in this uh, new edition of the IEEE EDUCON 2021 from Vienna. We expect to be there and, and we try to be there, but this year was not possible, was not feasible. But it's a real pleasure to have more than 300 people again for this new uh, EDUCON uh, conference in, in Vienna. Hello, Monica, for the attendance here. Hello, everybody. She will uh, co chair the session. Uh, some of the people know me. I'm Manuel Castro. I'm the, the steering committee chair of the IEEE EDUCON. And together with Mundo Tobar, we started the EDUCON in 2010 in Madrid. And we will have now the, the first uh, session of the conference. Uh, my co-chair in, in this case is, as I told you, Monica Divitini, and she's from, the, from Norway, where she was a student previously in, 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 Copen in Harus in Denmark. And she belongs now to the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. And this is to a, a real pleasure to present our first keynote speaker, Sabine Erliska. She is the Chief Executive Officer and Chief Technology Officer of Infineon Technologies in Austria. And she will be our first keynote speaker today. I'd like to thank you for your attention and, and to be here. She was involved in several uh, universities in, in Academia Life, in uh, internships and, and leading organizations in the United States, in George Washington University and John Hopkins as a Fulbright Scholar. And she was a uh, vice rector in the Medical University of Graz in Vienna. She was really involved in the activities in Austria. And, and now she's, uh, as I told you, the, the CEO of uh, Infineon Technologies in Austria. She was involved for more than 20 years in the European research as advisor at several positions in the system of research in Europe as chair of the government board in different public and private partnerships and electronic component. And now she's involved fully as a private as an in Infineon Technologies. She's one of our clear examples of our uh, motto for this year as we mean engineering, we belong, uh, and we believe that this is the, the future we are putting on the road in IEEE and, and several institutions worldwide to have this activity. And it's a real pleasure to, to say you welcome and to introduce you and, and push you floor. Thank you very much. You can unmute your micro and you can go. Now you are muted. So, 
Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm sharing here. So, yes, uh, thank you very much for uh, the kind introduction and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone here in the call. Uh, I hope you can see my slides already. Yes, we can see it. You can put in full mode. Yes, on the way. So, um, yeah, thanks so much. Um, what a great opportunity to come together in, in, in this mode and exchange on, on these important issues all around education. To be honest, I was inspired by the IEEE motto that you have in general, uh, which means advancing technology for humanity. And I think particularly in a year like this, it's even more true. And therefore I have summarized my reflections under the motto of technology with a purpose. And um, will refer to the crisis, the pandemic as, as a driver for more sustainability and sustainability understood in a much broader sense. And <clears throat> in particular, with your focus on women in engineering, I think it's important to draw this kind of broader um, uh, perspective because this issue of purpose is so important for our discipline to be able to um, convey this enthusiasm for technology even broader. So I want to start off with this kind of picture. We are in the largest crisis since World War II in many dimensions. And these are circumstances we cannot influence. And I took the example of the sailboat with the wind. I mean, we cannot influence or direct the wind, but it's up to us how we adjust the sails. And this is very much um, the driving principle I want to apply. Um, circumstances are as they are, but it's to a large extent also in our hands, how we deal with it. And this is what we do as a company, as Infineon in this case, but this is, I think, also very much the differentiating factor for those who will be successful in using this crisis to accelerate development, to come up with better solutions. And this is particularly true for our sector of technology that serves a broader purpose. Now, um, two slides on Infineon, who we are. Uh, Infineon is a globally active uh, corporation in microelectronics, semiconductors. Um, we are top 10 uh, amongst the, uh, am we are amongst the top 10 of the semiconductor companies. Uh, you see the total number of employees, uh, some 46,000, uh, quite significant in R&D, and our core areas are automotive, energy efficiency, security, and everything around data. For an expert audience like this, I also want to show you a bit more of our core competencies which goes all the way from sensors, from compute with microcontrollers, a little bit of memory, but in particular to actuate power semiconductors is one of our core areas. And of course, quite a number of applications in connectivity. Now, coming back to my presentation, I want to share with you uh, my thoughts around those key messages. First of all, the pandemic, as hard, as tough as it is, it has been and will be even more an accelerator for this kind of digital transformation. And we as expert community are at the core of it. So a few reflections on this. 
Semiconductors, microelectronics as catalysts for more sustainability in three dimensions, economic sustainability, environmental sustainability, and societal sustainability. And I will end with a couple of conclusions, particularly with respect to societal and education related um, thoughts. Now coming to this first point, the pandemic as accelerator of digitalization. This is based on a study by McKinsey. And I think it's so significant. And um, many of us experience that all of a sudden, since a bit more than a year, digitalization has found its much stronger way in many areas. But this can be also summarized or estimated uh, in figures. What you see here based on McKinsey and there are many others, uh, just two areas, uh, uh, activities in digital, digital customer interaction and in digital products and services. Look at the numbers of acceleration. I mean, this is significant. When did we experience a situation, an area with an acceleration of development in the dimension of, let's say, four, three, four to 10 years. This is a very specific situation with all the hardness, with all the pain of the pandemic. It's also backwind for many developments. And we, as a professional organization, as an organization, IEEE, at the core of, 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 of digitalization, um, yeah, we should use that because the rates of adoption have significantly improved and the mindset has also changed. Also combined with funding for digital initiative has significantly increased. And I'm a firm believer that we are only at the start of this beginning. And uh, the faster we will be able to adapt and use this kind of um, positive, positive background or positive implication, uh, the better uh, it will be for all of us uh, coming back to this motto of technology with a purpose. Having said that, of course, our global mega trends are still the same. Climate change, the resource scarcity, uh, to name one of the most uh, heavily discussed ones, the demographic development, the social change, making growth for many people possible, also linked to urbanization, but also the digital transformation, as said. So these trends, despite the massive discussion on the pandemic during the last year, but these trends are still the same. These trends remain. And we talk about the vaccine against uh, COVID-19, against climate change, we don't have a vaccine. So we have to deal with it. And this is what we as electronics and microelectronics and semiconductors provide. So we can be and we are a catalyst for more sustainability, more resilience. In this world, as you see here, many people tend to, to refer to it with kind of more volatile, more uncertain, more complex or more ambiguous world that we live in. And therefore, I want to comment on these three dimensions of sustainability, economic sustainability, environmental sustainability, and societal sustainability. Now coming to this opportunity one, this uh, sustainability in economic terms. Semiconductors are actually a rather small, let's say, market with here some $450 billion market worldwide. But why are they strategically, strategically important? Because they play into all the other application areas, the broader electronics community, 
And you see here the figures uh, going back to 2018, plus also the broad uh, application areas as listed here on top of the triangle. And many of you might have followed even the, 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 the reports and the news, the scarcity of chips. So the pandemic has, has, has focused the view on this fact even more. So uh, here you have some kind of, um, uh, you have the figures as a background for what you hear. So semiconductors, microelectronics enable broader applications, broader markets, and due to the innovation capacity, to the speed of innovation we also have in semiconductors, we push, we are a push also for innovation in those sectors, but also making innovation um, accessible uh, because we are a mass producer. Now the effects of the pandemic also with respect to the um, comparison of the global e economy and the semiconductor industry and very much in broad figures. Because of the pandemic, we saw a global GDP reduction of 4.5% and massive loss of jobs. While at the same time, we saw an increase of the semiconductor industry global sales and wafer uh, shipment, wafer area shipment in the dimension indicated here, 6.5% and plus 5%. And nowadays we are on the news because the global economy is changing and it has become clear that semiconductors, microelectronics are a key enabling, are a key enabling technology for many application areas. And this is also reflected by the global investment situation. And you see here some of the most recent investment um, uh, press releases, uh, globally speaking, and, and, and for us as Infineon, we are also investing massively. We announced that two years ago, 1.6 billion in Austria, in Carinthia, and we start production uh, this year, but in the meantime, of course, many other went ahead and TSMC has even announced larger investments. That's highly needed because of uh, this core role that semiconductors microelectronics have. And we also enable the, the global data industry and uh, not that the fact as such is a surprise to you, but I think the figures and the com comparison is interesting. If you compare the market capitalization with the GDP of some of the countries listed here on the left-hand side, you can imagine this huge strategic importance of those huge data giants like Apple, like Microsoft, like Amazon or Facebook have. Now, just comparing this one, um, the market capitalization of Apple is almost at the same dimension of the GDP of Italy. Now imagine what, what it means um, technologically, but also society. And of course, we are just at the beginning and again here, uh, an important impact as key enabling technology, uh, enabling the further growth, the push of artificial intelligence. And again, not that the fact as such is new in particular in this community, but putting, uh, looking at the figures is quite impressive. We see significant growth, significant GDP um, growth, uh, in, in many regions and of course China outstanding because of many of the initiatives China is going ahead. With these flashlights, I move on to the opportunity number two, the contribution to our environment, to the environmental sustainability. 
This is a quote by OECD. ICT as such is key enabler of green growth in all sectors of the economy. And for that reason, many governments have come up with tangible climate goals. The United States with the new administration, Europe, uh, very ambitious with specific goals and here also China. And the question is, well, let's put it like this, coming up with goals is one step, but implementing them is a second step. Now, what I want to stress is, we have to focus very much on how to implement because the goal, formulating the goal might be a tough political process, but making it real is about implementation. And we are a community that allows for the implementation. Now, how, again, a couple of uh, examples put together in figures. And I think this is very interesting. What you see here is the development over the years uh, until 2019. And you can imagine in 2020, it has certainly even improved. What you see here on the um, uh, bottom line um, uh, is the uh, 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 data center energy consumption, the data, uh, the, inter, the, the flow of goods, the development of the flow of goods here, the second one, data center workload here, and here the internet traffic. And of course we experienced uh, that particularly last year between February and April last year, plus 40% in addition of internet traffic. And the message is here, we do have the technology for energy efficiency, making this growth possible. Because what you see here, the data center energy consumption, while at the same time, this increase of internet traffic. And this has certainly improved. Now, going back to my company, we provide the energy saving chips for data centers like others as well. So we are one of the companies like many others and together with you as an, as a, as an expert organization, we allow, we make this implementation of the climate goals possible through our technological expertise. This is a purpose. Or if you look at the, uh, at the situation on traffic, Traffic, one of the largest um, emitters of CO2 and, and other emissions. And here the context of the legal um, framework in many of the regions and countries. So the trend naturally has to go down. And here what you see is from tank to wheel. Yes, I know, but nevertheless, the reduction of CO2 emission. Also here, this is our purpose. We will make this possible and implement. We contribute to the implementation of those ambitious climate goals. And taking a particular look, a particular look at uh, power semiconductors, we are expert in, one sees that also in the in, uh, increase of the power uh, semiconductor share, uh, the mild hybrid in the dimension of $90 and battery electric vehicle with a significantly higher share. This is the basis for generating attractive future oriented jobs. In many cases, when you hear people talk about uh, the climate challenge, the climate goals, it's combined with this idea that the economies are running into the danger of being reduced, jobs are lost. Yes, we will see a transformation, but we as specialist organization, you as actors in the fields, you represent those sectors where we have 
a future-oriented growth of opportunities because we serve technologies with a purpose. And uh, again, this is, this is in principle not new, but again here interesting figures, I think, um, uh, on energy efficiency and other area where we have where we provide a huge aspect of purpose where you see the let's say traditional generation of energy the transmission and distribution and end up with uh, out of uh, 220 watts uh, some 60 watts that are usable so some 75 percent that are lost while at the same time if combined with renewables for the generation, intelligent transmission and distribution, we end up at being able of using 75% of the energy. Now, if we think about how to implement those ambitious climate goals, we do have a lot of technology already available. Here, this is about implementation. And this is a large share of making those ambitions, um, ambitious and highly needed climate goals a reality. For us as Infineon, we are highly committed to this issue. And therefore we have set uh, ourselves the target of um, CO2 neutrality by 2030. So tell me about ambitious goals. <laughs> We have set those and primarily by avoiding emissions and we are very specific. So already by 2025, we want to have reduced some 70%. And since I'm in charge of Infineon Austria, I give you another figure here. Last year, we have produced some 8.5 billion chips only at Infineon Austria. Those 8.5 billion chips are able to reduce the CO2 emissions of some 60% of the annual automotive emissions in Austria. So this is significant. And this is a clear indication of this, these technologies that we do already have at hand to contribute to this environmental sustainability. And with this, I want to come to the third opportunity, which I call the societal sustainability in all the areas. As high-tech industry, we offer future-oriented good jobs. We contribute to let's say societal increase of participation and inclusion through, for instance, electronic government. We provide security technologies and help in this digitalized uh, environment and society where we need more security. And we are very much committed to education. And in the end, it's all about skills, and qualification. And again, here a few examples. If you compare the industrial average, and in this case taken from the US as an example, if you compare the industrial average versus the high capital expenditure industry, you see here the share. Or semiconductor manufacturing workers earn twice the average of all US manufacturing workers. Or, and also this I think is, is significant, one job in microelectronics creates in the value chain five additional jobs. And with this, uh, again, a snapshot, I want to conclude in the following way. We contribute a semiconductor industry to sustainability in many areas. 
and I took those three elements of sustainability, the economic, the environmental and the societal sustainability. And as such, we are cornerstones of modern societies. We provide the answers to those global societal challenges. We do have a purpose and we implement it day by day. I think particular, particularly in a year um, like this, or in a situation with a global pandemic, it's important to think big and bold. So at the corner, at the, at the core of all that, in addition to what I said earlier, education and qualification is the key to come up, to go broader with our contributions. And we as semiconductor industry offer those highly attractive opportunities in cooperation with many of the education institutions. So this is very specific. It's very much about people. And I want to be even a bit more specific in showing you some of the opportunities that we as Infineon offer, but just as an example for many of those active in this sector, we offer internships, bachelor, master, and PhD thesis. We have talent programs at all levels. We offer opportunities for uh, exchange, like specific study and work programs. In this case, together with our colleagues in Corinthia, apprenticeships, dual studies, summer schools, and uh, various other opportunities. And I want to conclude on purpose with this picture because the conference also focuses on women and engineering. And as much as I'm deeply convinced that the focus is good and necessary, I think we have to think it in a broader way because the challenge is to make sure that we increase our diverse diversity in a broader sense, based on the understanding that altogether in dealing with those major global and societal challenges, we need the best brains, the best people to come together. The more diverse we are, the more we are able to include women in our society, the better and the higher the chances to come up with the best solutions that we urgently need. And there is still a lot to do, but this is an important contribution that you come up with as, as a conference and as a uh, organization. And therefore, uh, I want to end by saying we are on the same line and I'm very much um, looking forward to your joint to your future initiatives and look forward to our joint initiatives. And with this, I want to end and happy to answer any questions if there are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to have you in this first keynote and opening ceremony today for the IEEE EDUCON 2021. I don't know if we have some some questions for the people I, I didn't see in the chat. I have one that is the typical first one that I have in mind. What do you think about it? I believe the, the young people is starting now to having this, this idea that we have to change something, at least something. I don't know if we have to change everything, but at least to have to, we, we must be a, a more sustainable world and a more sustainable area. And of course, the, the microelectronics sector in general is one of the, of course, microelectronics is needed for the future, but is one that should be changed uh, some things in, inside it, having the things. What do you think about these young people? How do you see it? And of course, how did the, the, the young women to be involved in these activities for the future, for the sustainable of the world and for the technical activities there? We are trying to do out of work with the STEAM people, STEAM women and so on, and we will need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking here with figures in the background of um, 
uh, Infineon having 18% women involved, 8% uh, in leadership positions, uh, and 12% of women uh, finalizing uh, electronic studies. 12%. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this figure has not changed so much over the years. So uh, on the positive side, one could say, well, we managed to um, involve more women uh, as compared to those who are on a specific educational path in academic terms. But on the other hand, this is also an indication that we have to change much more educationally. Mm. In the, and, and I mean, all the figures indicate typically two areas. Uh, the one is to start very early with this kind of enthusiasm for science and technology. And the other one is to be able to offer those child care infrastructure in a much broader way. And again, I give you an example. We as a company, we have initiated together with partners, uh, a daycare center. <laughs> we have uh, come up with a focus on science and technology. We have a science mini lab. <laughs> we have girls and boys sitting there, eyes like this, and experimenting. <laughs> uh, and my my basic um, approach is always that every ki every kid is 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 a born um, uh, scientist in natural sciences because every kid. Uh, uh, gets back to the parents and asks, why is the sky blue? Why is the, the long green? And for us, it's typically hard <laughs> to answer that. Yeah. So the challenge is, and to come back to your question, the challenge is how to um, not only keep, but how to increase this intrinsic interest. Um, Together with many others, we have given the example, and I think societally we have to go much broader. And, and hopefully, and that's the, the final thought coming back to your question, also here, the push of digitalization due to the pandemic can help. Why? Because digitalization uh, can also change how we, how we educate, and in particular, how we educate science and technology. Gamification is one keyword, more interactive, um, more tangible maybe. So I personally, I think the huge potential lies in this change of the didactics. Yes, I believe this is one of the, of the key stones there to, to try to do it. You have one question, Monica, there? Yes, thank you very much for an inspiring uh, presentation and also for being such a great role model. And we know that uh, uh, to involve more women, uh, we need more women that lead and give examples. So thank you very much. Um, I, I wanted you talk about uh, uh, purpose and you talk about the different dimension of sustainability. Now I work in uh, university, so I train computer scientists. Do you have any advice? How do you, how do we help a student to care? What can we do to make them care about uh, all these uh, bigger picture? Mm. Mm. Starting with the advice? application. Yeah, starting with the problem and the application. Typically, uh, and, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, our generation is socialized by starting with, let's say, the theory. <laughs> and I think we, we, we have to think backwards, starting with the challenge. So what could be the solutions, let's say, for energy efficiency, for, um, or if you take it very broad, uh, um, um, yeah, climate change, if you like. But taking the example of this slide, if you remember that, the slide where I showed the increase of internet traffic, while at the same time keeping the energy consumption low, that's, that's a fantastic starting point. Because you could ask, 
while we see an increase of internet traffic. And typically internet traffic is combined with quite significant CO2 emission. So how can you reduce that? What could be the technological answer to that? So my experience is um, that if you start with the first challenge, second application related to it, it's easier to convey this enthusiasm, the motivation, and it's easier to increase the interest of women. I, there are there, I mean, you know that much better than I do, but there are those tons of studies analyzing only that the, 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 the names of study programs. And now again, staying in my field, if we call a study program power electronics, or if we call it technical energy efficiency, might make a big difference. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But technology uh, expertise wise, of course, it's the same. So it's not about uh, 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 giving a wrong picture about the content, but focusing more on the application and, and why this, this expertise is relevant. Thank you. Thank you, Sabine. We have one question from Ananda in the chat that is, have you looked at sustainability in the design and manufacturing processes in, of the semiconductors. And I can join to another question that should be, do you know that European Commission sent a really ambitious plan for the semiconductor industry in Europe? Because we have to, to try to be a more, more, have more competency with the Americans and the Asia uh, foundries there. What do you think, putting together both things, more yeah. sustainable activities in the semiconductor industry and how Air Europe can go up and can be more present in the in our day-to-day -day life in our mm. telecoms. Mm. The two most relevant questions. Yes. The, <laughs> if you have uh, the answer, we, we can win. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer in two sentences, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you have three minutes. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I try my best. <laughs> now coming back to the question. Uh, we implement digitalization in, in, in the design of our uh, manufacturing processes. Um, like for instance, energy um, uh, efficiency, uh, the, the careful uh, 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 use of resources uh, like power, uh, like water. Um, so we are amongst the uh, most sustainable companies worldwide, and we are also listed in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. And not only since uh, recently, but for the last, I think, 10 years or so. So we take that very serious, and we have applied quite a lot of technologies at the core of our processes in order to achieve this, this higher degree of sustainability in re reducing resources from year to year, actually. And, 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 and we go into benchmarks uh, and evaluations on this, so, so we take that serious. Um, second question on this changing geopolitical situation. Um, um, I'm inclined to say a lot to that, <laughs> but uh, uh, start again from, from, from backwards. Uh, I think in this changing uh, geopolitical situation, Europe has to develop its own strength, which means focusing on those key enabling competencies and technologies of which microelectronics is one of those. And this has been discussed since 2008-9. Uh, there have been initiatives put forward but I think um, maybe also here, the pandemic has helped in making it very clear to many more of us in the society and amongst the politicians that um, we are talking about microelectronics as a key enabling technology. Um, I mean, think back, 
in a, a year ago, we had a lack of trivial masks in Europe, remember? And this is not high tech. This is very low tech. Now imagine all of us, we use digital tools. The drivers of it are microelectronics, are chips. Now think of not having that. Yeah. Yes. Well, so that has become very clear to many of the decision makers. We have been talking about that for years. And just to give you another example, amongst the 20 largest semiconductor companies, only three are steered out of Europe. Three. Yeah. Now, this issue of technological sovereignty has become a very important but also urgent one. On the other hand, and I also want to stress that, I'm not thinking about a fortress Europe. We are here as, as a gathering, you as an organization are a global organization. So globalization is important. Globalization has brought a lot of benefits in many dimensions. Education is one of them, science and technology accessibility. However, Europe cannot rely on others to negotiate. And this is a very clear message. Europe has to invest in its competences and based on a strong position, find um, uh, agreements with China and the US. Yes, I, I believe the, the, the new center at that the European Commission is doing to have the industry 5.0 to be yes. human centered yeah. <coughs> should be one part of the of the key yeah. for the future. Okay, thank you very much. We finished this first uh, keynote session. Thank you, Sabina, for your talk. Thank you, Monica, for co chatting with me. Thank you, all the organizers, Thomas, Christian, Peter, and of course, uh, Edmundo and Antonio. And thank you to all the past organizers and past. Uh, uh, chairs of the conference like Christos or Michael Auer and, and some people that I saw there. Thank you, Habib, our next uh, conference chair next year. And see you in the coffee break in two minutes. Go there and All thank the you very much again. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Take care. Stay healthy. Bye bye. And we will enjoy these three days bye. of EduCon 2021. Bye bye. Bye bye.